पेलेंटोलॉजी के साथ साथ कंपेरेटिव एनेटमी इज ऑल्सो प्रोवाइडिंग अस एविडेंसेस टू स्टडी एवोल्यूशन एंड टू डिफाइन द इंसेस्ट्रल लाइन बिटवीन द पास्ट एंड द प्रेजेंट स्पीशी सो द कंपेरेटिव एनेटमी इज डिफाइंड एज अ स्टडी ऑफ सिमिलैरिटीज एंड डिफरेंसेस इन द एनेटमी ऑफ डिफरेंट स्पीशीज इट इज क्लोजली रिलेटेड टू एवोल्यूशनरी बियोलॉजी एंड फाइलॉजनी Uh, phylogeny may we are studying uh, the evolution of the species from the ancestor till its present form so homology is uh, the one concept in comparative anatomy mein hame do major aise concepts milte hain one is called homology and the other is called analogy aur ye hame evolutionary study mein bahut zyada uh, help out karte hain for example the homology is um, is giving us the concept of divergent evolution which means that there was a common descendant and then with the passage of time jab environment change hona shuru hua aur uh, those uh, ancestors they started facing different types of environments in different regions of the world then they start developing those characters which were suitable in that changed environment so according to homology there are species which look very dissimilar from each other but they have a common ancestor so this theory of uh, divergent uh, evolution it can be understood uh, with the help of uh, one example for limbs of vertebrate in this image we can see these are the um, the anatomical picture of uh, different animals for example human horse bird bat seal and turtle for limbs humans ke case mein we uh, use our for limb to hold things हॉर्सेज अपने फोर लिम्स को रनिंग के लिए यूज करते हैं बर्ड्स अपने फोर लिम जो कि उनके विंग्स हैं उसको फ्लाइंग के लिए यूज कर रहे हैं बैट इज ऑल्सो यूजिंग इट फॉर फ्लाइंग सील्स और टर्टल्स अपने फोर लिम्स को स्विमिंग और फ्लिपिंग के लिए यूज करते हैं सो इन दैट केस वी कैन सी के फंक्शन इज डिफरेंट बट अनेटमी इज सिमिलर so if we look at these bones the arrangement of the bones it's a, it has one longer bone humerus and then the two bones radius and ulna so these two bones here and the one bone here it is present in all those species and then they have digits jo ki hamare kisi bhi animal ke haath mein ya uske iske flipper mein ye digits hain inke wing mein ye digits hain the horse has these digits in its toe and then we have these digits in our hand so anatomically these structures are similar to each other but they have different kind of functions and that function was adopted according to the changed environment so therefore it can be said ke ye sub species jinke four limbs they are performing different functions but in past time there is possibility ke there was a common ancestor of these species जिसमें विद द पैसेज ऑफ टाइम चेंजेस आना शुरू हुए वेरिएशंस आना शुरू हुई और वो एक डिफरेंट फंक्शन अडॉप्ट कर लिया गया फॉर एग्जांपल ह्यूमन इज स्टिल यूजिंग इट्स फोर लिम फॉर द होल्डिंग बट अ बैट इज यूजिंग इट्स फोर लिम फॉर फ्लाइंग सो होमोलॉजी इज गिविंग अस अ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ अ कॉमन डिसेंडेंट बट विद द पैसेज ऑफ टाइम देर वर वेरिएशन एंड देन देर वर एवोल्यूशन ऑफ डिफरेंट स्पीशीज so that's how all the life it can be traced back to a common ancestor there is a possibility that all the species present uh, on our planet they might have a common ancestor analogy is an others um, an other field of uh, comparative anatomy this is an other type which is giving us uh, the concept of convergent evolution convergent evolution means Uh, the different origins different species as ancestors lekin jaise jaise environment change hota gaya ye different species they start adopting uh, one or a range of characters similar to each other to ab is stage mein ya present time mein we assume that these species are very much similar or we have the evidences that these species are similar to each other but in the past time they were very much dissimilar from each other to so, change environment ne inko force kiya ke wo aise variations adopt kare jinki wajah se in species ke darmiyan mein dissimilarity kam hona shuru ho jaye aur wo is point tak pahunch jaye ki we can start considering them 
same species or the similar species and they might be classified in the same taxon. So, such type of structures, these are called as uh, analogous structures and they can be explained with the help of this example. Here is again the wing of a bat and the wing of a bird. They are used for flying. And we uh, have seen in this example mein dekh liya ke they have the similar arrangement of bones in their wings. But birds or bats, they are using their wings for flight. Insects are using their wings for flight. So, they have a common function. But if we study it anatomically, study kare, so we would see that an insect ka wing is totally different from the wing of birds and bats. So, if we look at the function, then it seems that insects are, they might have a common ancestry shared with birds or the bats. But comparative anatomy tells us that insects are totally different anatomically from the bird wing and the bat wing. This means that in any evolution ki kisi ek stage, par, these species, insect, bird and bats, they were totally different from each other. But with the change in environment, they adopted the mode of flight. So, to fly, all these different species, they develop same structure, which is wing. So, the function is same, but structure is different. Homology or analogy ke saath vestigial organ are also providing evidences about the evolution of uh, uh, different organs and different functions. So, vestigial organ is the retention of certain organ during the process of uh, sexual reproduction of genetically determined structures or attributes. But these uh, structures which are still present and uh, these are, this characteristic is transferred from the parents to the offspring, but uh, functionally these uh, structures are playing no important role for that organism. So, although they are present in the body of that organism, but functionally they are useless or they are not in use. So, vestigial organs, they are providing us this evidence that ancestor of that species, which has a vestigial organ, they might be using those organs in past times. But with the change of environment, they stopped using it. And this lack of use or disuse, it resulted in dysfunctionality of these organs. But they are still present in the body of that organism. So, vestigiality is loss of feature due to loss of uh, its value in the changed environment and it can be explained with the help of uh, a human vermiform appendix on the vestigial cecum. So, we know that uh, appendix is present in all humans but in other mammals it is functional. Uh, it is, a, uh, there is a flourishing microbiota in the appendix. It is helping in digestion of cellulose. But in case of human, uh, this appendix is completely a useless organ. So, there is no use of appendix. Another example of vestigial organ uh, is the vestigial hind limbs in boa constrictor snakes. In this picture, we can see that snake uh, which are not using these uh, the legs for the moment, but we can see there is a remnant of leg or a stump hai, uh, which is considered as the remnant of the hind limb in boa constrictor. So, it can be assumed that boa constrictor ke ancestors they used to have legs, but with the change of um, environment, they adopted this characteristic that they stop using their limbs for the locomotion and they start relying more on their muscles and, the, and their spine for their movement. This is uh, present day snakes, they don't have legs, but the presence of this stump, it shows that the ancestors, they used to have legs for locomotion. So, this way, se, vestigial organs, they give us a picture of our ancestors. So, all without uh, helping of uh, rock or fossils, vestigial organ ki help se hum ye identify kar sakte hain ki hamare ancestors ya kisi bhi present species ke ancestors they might have this character but uh, this character was being lost over the time period